Hi, today I'm going to show you a quiz program. This one's about music, but you can make it about whatever you want. How many strings does a violin have? Four. How many beats are there per measure in 2-4 time? Well, if you're a musician, you probably know that's two. And in what family of instruments is the piano? Well, hmm, it's got strings. Is it in the strings family? No, the answer is percussion. We got two right and one wrong. Let's go into Python and I'll show you how this program works. When, whenever you run the program, the uh, answers appear in a random order. Yeah, they're kind of uh, shuffled. There's a feature in Python that, that does this. There's a shuffle function in the random module. So now shuffle is available. If I make a list of some numbers, and show them to you there, uh, then I want to shuffle them. This is how I do it. And now they're shuffled. And every time I call shuffle on that list, it shuffles them. See, that's a different order now. Um, you can also do that on large ranges. You could say nums equal range 100. Now we have all these numbers ordered from 0 to 99 and shuffle that and now they're all mixed up. Okay, so that's one little lesson about how to shuffle the list of things. Next is um, how the program stores the questions and answers. And uh, to know about that we need to learn about tuples. And a tuple, so let's see we have a question and answer and we set that to this. So the question would be how many beats per measure and the answer would be two. So that's a question and answer. It's kind of a two-part thing. QA has two parts and if you want to get the question out of it you use this notation. If you want to get the answer out of it, you use this notation. So that's kind of a way to store a two-part object, something with two pieces. In this case, a question and answer. Now, this is what we want to do is a little more complicated because we have more than one question. So what if we were to say questions and answers, plural, equals, and then we have a, a list then I'll go to the next line and now we'll put in some tuples like how many beats two and a comma next line and another tuple and uh, let's see something else about music what is a drum stick made out of usually the answer is wood. So now we have two questions here and now I'm going to put a closing square bracket and now QA's is a list of tuples. So it's a list of two tuples. Each tuple has two things. So let's look at how we could get things out of this list of tuples. Well if we say QA's zero like this we get the first tuple if we say QA is 1, we get the second tuple. Now think about how we might get the first question out of the first tuple. Well, to get the first tuple, that was this. And we want to now extract the first part of that tuple. So if you thought about doing this, that was right. That gets the first. And notice we start counting with 0. So when I say first, I mean number 0. What if you wanted to get the answer for the first question? What would you do? We do that. What if we want to get the second question? What about the second answer? Do you get the idea? You see what's happening? Okay, so that's an important part of this project. Now, we need a way to uh, present the questions. So we have 
QAs, which is the questions and answers, and we want to have some kind of loop so that we can ask every question. So what if we say something like uh, for question and then the, the right answer in QAs. What this will do is it will go through every question and it will take the question and store it in this variable question. It will take the quite it'll take the answer and store it in this. So uh, just to sh demonstrate what this would do, I can say print the question is and the answer is. So this loop here should show all the questions and answers. There it is. The question is how many beans how many beats is what that was supposed to be, huh? Okay, how many beats? And the answer is two. And what is a drumstick made out of? And the answer is wood. All right, so with, uh, with the for statement like that, we can get the question and the answer out. Um, now we need a way to know if the answer was right. Actually, you have to use raw input, too. Uh, let me start putting this into, into NetBeans here. So we have from random import shuffle, and then we have some, uh, and I'm just going to save some typing here. I'm going to paste this in. Here are three questions. So you remember that QAs is a list containing three tuples. Each tuple has two parts, a question and an answer. Now we want to shuffle the questions. Now they'll be shuffled. And then we want to set up this loop here for question, answer, and QAs. And then uh, we want to use raw input. Maybe you've used raw input before to get the answer to a question. So this is how we'll ask the question. So we say answer is raw input and then the question. And I'm going to add a space after the question. Now we need to see if the, uh, if the answer that the person typed is the correct answer, if it matches the correct answer. So we'll say if answer equals the right answer, then print right. Else print no, the answer is right answer. And then at the end, uh, you know, we need to keep track of how many we have right, so we need a variable for that. So we'll say num right is zero, because at the beginning we have answered zero right. Then at the end, we need to say print you got some number right and some number wrong. And then we plug in the number right. And then how can we calculate the number that we're wrong? Let's say you have three questions and you got one right. How could you get the, the two? Well, you could say three, you could say the number of questions minus the number that were right. And that'll give you the number wrong. Um, the problem with typing a three here is what if you want to add a fourth question or remove a question? So we don't want to have a three here because we would have to change it later. Uh, so instead, we'll use this function uh, to get the length of the questions and answers. So since QAs here has a length of three, this is one, this is two, this is three, then length of it will be three. 
Okay, so let me just uh, look this over again to see if I have it right. So we import shuffle so we can use it. We create the questions and answers, a, a list of these tuples. We shuffle the list. We set the num right counter to zero. We have a loop here where we, one by one, extract the question and the right answer from QAs. Then we call raw input, presenting the question and a space after it. Uh, the space after it is just to make it look nice when you type it in so your answer doesn't touch the come up right next to the question mark. And then we want to know if the answer was right. If it is, we print right. Otherwise, we print no and what the answer really is. And then here we say you got some number right, some number wrong. Uh, okay, so one little bit that's missing is when we find one that's right, we have to add one to the counter. One other thing we want to do is somebody might type in um, percussion or whatever their answer is with all caps or with some combination of uppercase and lowercase letters. And so we don't want to have that uh, cause the answer not to match the right answer. So what we'll do is we'll call this function to convert it to lowercase first. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, demonstrate what that does. If you have uh, like ABC and you convert it to lower, then you get that. And so if I want to say uh, ABC equals ABC, well it doesn't because there one is capitalized, the other is not. But if I say ABC dot lower equals ABC, well that's true. They do match. Okay, I think I have everything here. Let me run it. And uh, how many beats are there per measure in 2-4 time? Well, are there three? No, the answer is two. In what family of instruments is the piano? Percussion. Right. How many strings does a violin have? Four. Right. You got two right and one wrong. Okay, there we have it.